Hi. Uh, thank you so much for coming and joining us tonight for wherever you are sitting right now. I want to welcome you to our housing and res life webinar. And my name is Amanda Sherratt, and I am from the admissions office here at Binghamton University. I'm really excited about the webinar tonight because I think that housing and res life on Binghamton is something that makes the experience rich and unique for our students. And the biggest reason for that is because of our community living. And whenever I talk about community living, what I'm saying is that we have a medium-sized university, but because we have a living communities sort of arrangement, it feels a lot smaller within those communities. And so students can really make those close connections and feel like they are in a smaller learning and living community and environment that will help them enrich their experience at Binghamton. So housing in res life is something that there's a lot of questions around. Each one of you coming on tonight, and I know there's a lot of you out there, will have a lot of different questions. So what we're doing is we're organizing ourselves tonight in a way that we're going to be showing you a video. And that video is going to introduce each one of those six living and learning communities that we have on our campus. And we are going to encourage you to use the Q&A function in order to ask our panel of people some questions. I have quite a few people on with me tonight and they're gonna to help to answer those res life questions. So the people that I have online tonight, I have from admissions, uh, I have Craig Broccoli, I have Alexander Ma, I have uh, David Babb, and I have Monica Chang. Um, Lou and she, they'll all of them are going to help you with any sorts of admissions type questions and, and process questions that we have for you tonight. Additionally, on tonight, we have Sue Briggs and Diana Casanulianos, and they are joining us from Residential Life, and we'll be here to answer your questions that are specific to Res Life and the processes there. Lastly, but I know probably the people you want to talk to the most or get answers from the most are our tour guides slash people that actually are living in those communities are students. And those students that we have on tonight represent each one of our living and learning communities. We have somebody that's lived in each one of them so that they can answer some of those questions that you may have about what it's really like in the different dorms there. I'd like to hand it over right now to Shannon, Dylan, and Haley so that they can do brief introductions of themselves and just say hi. Hi everyone, my name is Hallie Rogoff and I'm one of the tour guides here at Binghamton. I'm currently a sophomore majoring in political science and psychology and I've lived in the Hinman living community for two years now. Hi everyone, my name is Dylan Leather, I'm one of the other tour guides. I'm currently a senior double majoring in biology and environmental studies and I am currently an RA in the Hillside community which I've lived in for three years. Hey everyone, my name is Shannon. Um, I'm a junior studying mechanical engineering and minoring in sustainability. Um, I lived in Mountain View for my first year and I have been a resident assistant in College in the Woods for the past two years. Thanks for that everybody. So, you know, we're going to do our best to answer your questions tonight. And I know that you're going to have a lot of them, but I also want to encourage you that if you want to learn a little bit more about uh, a topic that's very similar to Res Life, our living and learning communities, we do have a webinar on that topic that will run this Sunday on the 5th from 3.30 to 4.30. Uh, additionally, if you do have any other questions uh, about things that aren't related to Res Life, we'd really kind of make sure that we want to keep the topics on Res Life today and prioritize those types of question and answer. So if you do have any other sorts of questions, if you could uh, take a look at our visit page, we have a listing of all different types of webinars, and you can find that Living and Learning Communities webinar on there, as well as other webinars of different topics that may be of interest to you. Lastly, I'd like to also mention that we have chat hours on Zoom, 
and we host those daily for with our admissions counselors from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time every Monday through Friday. And then on Wednesday evenings from 5 to 8, there's student chat hours on Zoom. And you can go to our visit page or uh, binghamton.edu slash admissions and you'll be able to find the links to go on to those Zoom chat hours. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to check out a video that's going to give you that background and what uh, each one of those living and learning communities is like. Uh, hear a little bit from students about what it's like to live in some of the dorms there. And we're going to open up the question and answer uh, feature on our webinar and encourage you to ask your questions there. That cross-section of Binghamton people that I had mentioned earlier will be here to answer those questions. And, uh, you know, I want to thank you again for joining our session and being with us this evening. Let's take a look at that video. Freshman here in Dickinson community. Welcome to my room. 
I love living in Dickinson because I get to have my own room and my own space, but I also get to live with my four wonderful flatmates like Lily here. Hi, Lily. Hey, I'm Lily, and now I'll show you my room. So I live in a typical double in Dickinson, which means I have a roommate. Between us two, we each get our own desk, our own closet, and a set of drawers. What's great about living in Dickinson is between the five of us, we have two bathrooms. Thank you for coming to our room. We'd love to show you more. We're both tour guides, so go online and schedule a campus tour. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Christina. Welcome to my room. We're in Endicott Hall in the New England community right now. Why don't you come on in? New England has corridor style rooms with three sets of bedrooms that share two private bathrooms. Those are called clusters. And then we have triple, single, and double rooms. My favorite thing about Newing is the fact that we are very social as a community. We have Newing Navy, which is a set of competitions for everyone in the community to get to know each other. Co-Rec Football, which is where we play football outside every Saturday morning. And Newing College Council hosts many events throughout the month to engage students and develop professional skills at the same time. Hey everyone, my name is Ashley and I'm a sophomore here at Binghamton University. I am majoring in Integrative Neuroscience and Art History and I live in Mountain View. I love Mountain View because it is a speed style type of dorm room. Speed style means that six girls or boys live together. Those six girls or boys share two bathrooms and have three rooms which is split evenly between the six people. Mountain View is great because it has awesome mountain views, hence our name. The nature preserve is basically our backyard. A lot of students find it very relaxing to just walk a minute into the nature preserve and go on a hike. Hi, my name is Jackie. I'm a sophomore here at Binghamton University. I'm a chemistry major, and right now we're in Mohawk, which is one of the many buildings in College of the Woods living community. In Mohawk, we have all suite styles, but in our other buildings, we have a mix of suite style and corridor style. In our room, we have six girls living here. We have two full bathrooms and a complete common area. So one of the reasons that I love living in College in the Woods is because there's a beautiful view right out my bedroom window. But not only that, our building is really, really close to classes and it's really easy to grab a bite at CAW Dining Hall. Hi, welcome to my room. I'm Marvin. I live in Hinman College in Hughes Hall. Hinman is a great community to be in because we're very social and friendly. It's a sweet style community, so it forces you to interact and socialize with your sweet mates, your roommates. We have common lounges on every floor, and it's a great place to hang out. So we have the best coffee place here on campus. We have a Starbucks. And if you're really hungry, we also have a Subway. Hinman is known for its traditions. Colrack football actually started here in Hinman College on campus. We have dorm wars in the fall and hysteria in the spring. And we just recently celebrated our 50th anniversary with fireworks in the quad. Hi guys, my name is Kara. I'm a student here at Binghamton University. And I live here in Susquehanna community, or as we affectionately call it, Susk. Susk is one of two apartment communities on campus, the other of which is Hillside. And these communities provide the perfect place for upperclassmen who are looking to have a little bit more independence, but they also still have a great sense of community. We have the coffee house here in Susk. There are student governments in each community and so many ways to get involved. So let me show you around. Both Susk and Hillside have their own kitchens, though all residents do have access to on-campus dining. And here we can cook whatever we'd like, which is perfect for when you need cookies at 3 a.m. 
I love living in the apartment communities because not only do I get to live with my best friends, but we get our own single rooms. The bathrooms are right across the hall. We don't have to share them with anyone. And not to mention, after a long day of classes, it's so nice to have the nature preserve right outside my door. freshman here in Dickinson community. Welcome to my room. I love living in Dickinson because I get to have my own room in my own space, but I also get to live with my four wonderful flatmates like Lily here. Hi Lily. Hey, I'm Lily and now I'll show you my room. So I live in a typical double in Dickinson, which means I have a roommate. Between us two, we each get our own desk, our own closet, and a set of drawers. What's great about living in Dickinson is between the five of us, we have two bathrooms. Thank you for coming to our rooms. We'd love to show you more. We're both tour guides, so go online and schedule a campus tour. Bye. Hey 
Hey guys, I'm Christina. Welcome to my room. We're in Endicott Hall in the Newing community right now. Why don't you come on in? Newing has corridor style rooms with three sets of bedrooms that share two private bathrooms. Those are called clusters. And then we have triple, single, and double rooms. My favorite thing about Newing is the fact that we are very social as a community. We have Newing Navy, which is a set of competitions for everyone in the community to get to know each other. Co-Rec Football, which is where we play football outside every Saturday morning. And Newing College Council hosts many events throughout the month to engage students and develop professional skills at the same time. Hey everyone, my name is Ashley and I'm a sophomore here at Binghamton University. I'm majoring in Integrative Neuroscience and Art History and I live in Mountain View. I love Mountain View because it is a suite style type of dorm room. Suite style means that six girls or boys live together. Those six girls or boys share two bathrooms and have three rooms which is split evenly between the six people. Mountain View is great because it has awesome mountain views, hence our name. The nature preserve is basically our backyard. A lot of students find it very relaxing to just walk a minute into the nature preserve and go on a hike. Hi, my name is Jackie. I'm a sophomore here at Binghamton University. I'm a chemistry major, and right now we're in Mohawk, which is one of the many buildings in College of the Woods living community. In Mohawk, we have all suite styles, but in our other buildings, we have a mix of suite style and corridor style. In our room, we have six girls living here. We have two full bathrooms and a complete common area. So one of the reasons that I love living in College in the Woods is because there's a beautiful view right out my bedroom window. But not only that, our building is really, really close to classes and it's really easy to grab a bite at CIW Dining Hall. Hi, welcome to my room. I'm Marvin. I live in Hinman College in Hughes Hall. Hinman is a great community to be in because we're very social and friendly. It's a sweet style community, so it forces you to interact and socialize with your sweet mates, your roommates, we have common lounges on every floor, and it's a great place to hang out. So we have the best coffee place here on campus. We have a Starbucks. And if you're really hungry, we also have a Subway. Hinman is known for its traditions. Co-Rec football actually started here in Hinman College on campus. We have dorm wars in the fall and hysteria in the spring. And we just recently celebrated our 50th anniversary with fireworks in the quad. Hi guys, my name is Kara. I'm a student here at Binghamton University and I live here in Susquehanna community or as we affectionately call it, Susk. Susk is one of two apartment communities on campus, the other of which is Hillside and these communities provide the perfect place for upperclassmen who are looking to have a little bit more independence but they also still have a great sense of community. We have the coffee house here in Susk. There are student governments in each community and so many ways to get involved. So let me show you around. Both Susk and Hillside have their own kitchens, so all residents do have access to on-campus dining. And here we can cook whatever we'd like, which is perfect for when you need cookies at 3 a.m. I love living in the apartment communities because not only do I get to live with my best friends, but we get our own single rooms. The bathrooms are right across the hall. We don't have to share them with anyone. And not to mention, after a long day of classes, it's so nice to have the nature preserve right outside my door.
guys, my name is Maya and I'm a freshman here in Dickinson Community. Welcome to my room. I love living in Dickinson because I get to have my own room and my own space, but I also get to live with my four wonderful flatmates like Lily here. Hi Lily. Hey, I'm Lily and now I'll show you my room. So I live in a typical double in Dickinson, which means I have a roommate. Between us two, we each get our own desk, our own closet, and a set of drawers. What's great about living in Dickinson is between the five of us, we have two bathrooms. Thank you for coming to our rooms. We'd love to show you more. We're both tour guides, so go online and schedule a campus tour. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Christina. Welcome to my room. We're in Endicott Hall in the New England community right now. Why don't you come on in? New England has corridor style rooms with three sets of bedrooms that share two private bathrooms. Those are called clusters. And then we have triple, single, and double rooms. My favorite thing about Newing is the fact that we are very social as a community. We have Newing Navy, which is a set of competitions for everyone in the community to get to know each other. Co-Rec Football, which is where we play football outside every Saturday morning. And Newing College Council hosts many events throughout the month to engage students and develop professional skills at the same time. My name is Ashley and I'm a sophomore here at Binghamton University. I'm majoring in Integrative Neuroscience and Art History and I live in Mountain View. I love Mountain View because it is a suite style type of dorm room. Suite style means that six girls or boys live together. Those six girls or boys share two bathrooms and have three rooms which is split evenly between the six people. Mountain View is great because it has awesome mountain views, hence our name. The Nature Preserve is basically our backyard. A lot of students find it very relaxing to just walk a minute into the Nature Preserve and go on a hike. Hi, my name is Jackie. I'm a sophomore here at Binghamton University. I'm a chemistry major, and right now we're in Mohawk, which is one of the many buildings in College of the Woods living community. In Mohawk, we have all suite styles, but in our other buildings, we have a mix of suite style and corridor style. In our room, we have six girls living here. We have two full bathrooms and a complete common area. So one of the reasons that I love living in College in the Woods is because there's a beautiful view right out my bedroom window. But not only that, our building is really, really close to classes and it's really easy to grab a bite at CIW Dining Hall. Hi, welcome to my room. I'm Marvin. I live in Hinman College in Hughes Hall. Hinman is a great community to be in because we're very social and friendly. It's a sweet style community, so it forces you to interact and socialize with your sweet mates, your roommates. We have common lounges on every floor, and it's a great place to hang out. So we have the best coffee place here on campus. We have a Starbucks. And if you're really hungry, we also have a Subway. Hinman is known for its traditions. Co-Rec football actually started here in Hinman College on campus. We have dorm wars in the fall and hysteria in the spring. And we just recently celebrated our 50th anniversary with fireworks in the quad. Hi guys, my name is Kara. I'm a student here at Binghamton University. And I live here in Susquehanna community, or as we affectionately call it, Susk. Susk is one of two apartment communities on campus, the other of which is Hillside. And these communities provide the perfect place for upperclassmen who are looking to have a little bit more independence, but they also still have a great sense of community. We have the coffee house here in Susk. There are student governments in each community and so many ways to get involved. So let me show you around. Both Susk and Hillside have their own kitchens, though all residents do have access to on-campus dining. 
And here we can cook whatever we'd like, which is perfect for when you need cookies at 3 a.m. I love living in the apartment communities because not only do I get to live with my best friends, but we get our own single rooms. The bathrooms are right across the hall. We don't have to share them with anyone. And not to mention, after a long day of classes, it's so nice to have the nature preserve right outside my door. freshman here in Dickinson community. Welcome to my room. I love living in Dickinson because I get to have my own room in my own space, but I also get to live with my four wonderful flatmates like Lily here. Hi Lily. Hey, I'm Lily and now I'll show you my room. So I live in a typical double in Dickinson, which means I have a roommate. Between us two, we each get our own desk, our own closet, and a set of drawers. What's great about living in Dickinson is between the five of us, we have two bathrooms. 
Thank you for coming to our rooms. We'd love to show you more. We're both tour guides, so go online and schedule a campus tour. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Christina. Welcome to my room. We're in Endicott Hall in the New England community right now. Why don't you come on in? Newing has corridor style rooms with three sets of bedrooms that share two private bathrooms. Those are called clusters. And then we have triple, single, and double rooms. My favorite thing about Newing is the fact that we are very social as a community. We have Newing Navy, which is a set of competitions for everyone in the community to get to know each other. Co-Rec Football, which is where we play football outside every Saturday morning. And Newing College Council hosts many events throughout the month to engage students and develop professional skills at the same time. Hey everyone, my name is Ashley and I'm a sophomore here at Binghamton University. I am majoring in Integrative Neuroscience and Art History and I live in Mountain View. I love Mountain View because it is a sweet style type of dorm room. Sweet style means that six girls or boys live together. Those six girls or boys share two bathrooms and have three rooms which is split evenly between the six people. Mountain View is great because it has awesome mountain views, hence our name. The nature preserve is basically our backyard. A lot of students find it very relaxing to just walk a minute into the nature preserve and go on a hike. Hi, my name is Jackie. I'm a sophomore here at Binghamton University. I'm a chemistry major, and right now we're in Mohawk, which is one of the many buildings in College of the Woods living community. In Mohawk, we have all suite styles, but in our other buildings, we have a mix of suite style and corridor style. In our room, we have six girls living here. We have two full bathrooms and a complete common area. So one of the reasons that I love living in College in the Woods is because there's a beautiful view right out my bedroom window. But not only that, our building is really, really close to classes and it's really easy to grab a bite at CIW Dining Hall. Hi, welcome to my room. I'm Marvin. I live at Hinman College in Hughes Hall. Hinman is a great community to be in. Sorry about that. I'm back and joining me right now is uh, Craig Broccoli, a fellow admissions personnel at Binghamton University. Hey everybody, it's Craig Broccoli. I'm the New York City Admissions Counselor and uh, did go to Binghamton to study their undergrad and grad studies and I lived on campus my entire life, so when I was a student. So definitely here, we're gonna have some students answer some questions live. I know we went through a lot of video there and a lot of really good questions. Probably not gonna get to all of them. Right. So, uh, Craig, I think to start off, one of the things that I'm seeing a lot is, you know, questions about sign up um, for the students. So I just want to reiterate that um, the student is deposit paid. The student will receive information through their B mail account, be able to fill out the, uh, the information for housing. They'll then be assigned a time slot that they can go in and choose the the room that they, and the, the bed that they will have. You wanna add anything to that, Craig? Yeah, so the, the housing center, I, I get there's a lot of anxiety right now. Um, this all comes in due time. We actually started with April 7th. We're ready to go to deposit paid. That will start, but it doesn't end the next day. Right? There's plenty of time to, to get to the point where you could read through all the information, actually talk with us even a bit further, going into mid, late April even. We'll have time to talk to you about all these different processes. Residential life will be available. So I don't want to create any anxiety here. The process tends to work itself out pretty easily. Even the idea of selecting roommates, you don't have to know who you want to live with. It's actually much more common, prevalent for students to go through this process naturally and just live with other first year students. And that's the magic of what it means to go away to a residential college. Uh, I know we have some RAs on the chat there too. and. I was an RA myself. Usually the best roommate agreements tend to happen, agreements happen when you have that random connection there. And that, that's part of the process. So we will walk 
all students as their questions come up through this process, especially on the admissions end with our live chat hours. I know, Amanda, you mentioned that in the beginning. All, every day we have that and every Wednesday evening, our students are live from five to eight. To actually have that one-on-one -on -one face to face conversation uh, for those of you who have those particular questions that you might want to go through. I'm going to go ahead and post in um, a chat here for all panelists and attendees to see uh, what those chat hours are. Um, it should also uh, use some links as well. So if you have those links that are available for that. Yeah, they're going to be right on our main admissions page when you want to contact us. Up at the top, it says that contact admissions. There's Zoom chat hours, so similar to this, but you can actually just join a breakout room with an admissions counselor if you want to do Wednesday nights, 5 to 8. That's with our current students, too, so you have some opportunities there. And we'll have other versions of this session happening a little later on, so there's plenty of time as those questions pop up. And just again, that's at binghamton.edu forward slash admissions and you can see it right there or you can go to our visit page and also see that. Additionally, I know I've seen a lot of questions in the Q&A that had to do with other topics. So I just want to bring up again because I know some people may have joined us a little late that we will have other webinars within the series. Um, one of those webinars coming up if you want to learn a little bit more about our learning and, and living communities will be on Sunday from 3.30 to 4.30. We have, uh, you know, a lot of different ones that we're going to be offering. So there may be a webinar also that hits the topic that you have an interest in. Um, some other things I saw on there, if you want me to, Craig, I can ask some of you, give you some of the questions and put them out there. One of the ones that I saw was uh, the students are wondering if they are coming in the spring, uh, what that process will look like and how it will be different from the fall. Yeah, I definitely saw a lot of those questions. Every year we bring in a talented class of students who start actually in January, which is, I'm ha so happy to see many of you are asking these questions, which is great. The, the Binghamton community is ever growing, ever changing. So we have many students who start off in January, as well as many students who actually transfer to Binghamton starting in January. Another couple hundred students starting off then. So it's always a good ebb and flow coming in. Um, we will be sending out information about housing signups for anybody who's admitted to the spring term, which is great because you have maybe even a little bit more time to think this through. Obviously, putting your deposit and claiming your spot at Binghamton is, even if you're admitted for the fall, is step number one before you get the next level of information. We don't want to make it too confusing. So you'll have some time. Housing signups for spring students doesn't happen until uh, later into that fall term. You have a lot of conversations even over that summer through our orientation process to make sure everybody's up to speed. Uh, but then we reevaluate our space available and try to find those opportunities for students who are admitted for the spring and finding the best case scenarios once we know where we're at in the fall. So plenty of time on that. I wouldn't worry too much about it, but um, we have many students who start off then. So it's, it's a common trend. So. One thing I want to bring some of our students back now because another common question I see is how do I go about picking a, um, a community or picking a hall? So I would like to invite those, our students to come in and, and tell us a little bit about your experience. Tour guides? Okay, I'll hop on. Um, Thanks, Dylan. Sure. So, sorry, can you repeat the question, Amanda? It was just yeah, one. Sure. Can you talk a little bit, uh, Dylan, about what it was like in your process to try to choose a community to live in? all to live in? Yeah, so of course I'm older, so the process has changed since then. Um, and it's definitely much better now because back then you would just kind of rank different preferences and then be put wherever. Um, but now students do have the choice of where they get to live. Um, and I think really what some drives some students' decision, it can be anything from the style of the rooms available in each community. It can be the location on campus, um, proximity to other buildings. It can be a favorite dining hall, for example, or different area traditions. So I think really, um, definitely, of course, everything we showed in the video, but also just checking them out online as well. Um, and really just finding what you feel would be the best for you, um, either for the year, two years, three years, four years, or however long. Um, I would say that's kind of the process that I would go through, yeah. 
Any of our other students want to share their experience? I'll add in the meantime, just I know as a graduate, but uh, as somebody who worked on campus for a long time, lived on campus for a long time, there's this effect that happens. Uh, it's called topophilia, right? You love where you live, wherever you end up, whatever community it is, they, at least for that first year, that's your favorite place. You'll have friends scattered about campus and you'll go visit wherever you want to go visit. And it, that's the part of being at a residential college. On the weekends, nobody's running home. Your home is Binghamton, right? So there's always events and activities going on. So the communities tend to almost feel like they blend together in terms of activity, activities and going to whatever dining hall you want, whenever you want. There's a nice flow to it. So I also like to let students know selecting a community is an important thought process, but it's not determining what your first year is gonna be like, right? And actually wherever you end up, Maybe it's a pride factor. It just ends up being one of your favorite places. And yeah, maybe you move to another community with a bunch of friends to live in a suite the following year. Uh, th those are all possibilities and that does happen. Um, but getting hung up on exactly finding the right spot and the right dorm and that part naturally will work itself out in the, in the long run there. And you can ask any of the alumni of Binghamton. They always love to tell you where they lived. Most of the time, it wasn't always just their first choice. It's just kind of where they ended up. Go ahead, Haley. I know you just joined on my video. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I personally ended up living in the Hinman Living Community my freshman year, and I wasn't really sure what it was all about, but um, all the experiences that I had were amazing. And then this year, my sweet mates and I all decided to live together again in Hinman and the building right next to where we had lived before. And I actually got involved with my hall government. So I got a lot of say in what happened in Hinman. I got to take part in a lot of fun traditions like dorm wars, which is basically color wars. All the buildings get t-shirts and get to compete against each other. And so I really loved where I ended up my freshman and my sophomore year, and it was kind of just by chance. I just kind of put myself in a room in the Hinman living community, didn't really know what it was all about, and ended up really loving it. Awesome. That's, I'm glad to hear that. Um, That's great. Share. Rachel, did, did you want to add your experience as well? Sure. Um, it's really funny that Hallie mentioned living in Hinman because I lived in Dickinson for the past two years, and I had best friends that lived across campus in Hinman, um, and we would stay up all night arguing which, you know, door was better, which community is better, um, and obviously I thought Dickinson was better, um, but Hallie was right, getting involved in, you know, the dorm wars and things like that can really help shape your experience no matter where you live, these events are happening across campus, and just like Craig said, just because you live in one community doesn't mean that you can't grab a bite to eat with your friends in another community in that dining hall. Um, so there are, are opportunities to kind of navigate your way through all the different communities. Amanda, can I address a question that I saw come up a few times? Sure. Yeah, I, I noticed that there's quite a few questions, uh, a generalized sense of like one place related to another place. And I, I know one of my colleagues sent out a map. There's a, always a campus map. It's a really interesting map, the way our campus is shaped. A lot of questions about which one's closest to the gym. Um, I mean, if you look at the map, technically you could figure that out. I think it's a new in community. But my bigger concern is if you're going to the gym, pick the one the farthest away, right? That's the workout. No. Um, but no, I get it. Like there's always that concern about where you're gonna be spending most of your time. You know, frankly, that's another thing that campus itself, while it's 900 something acres, everything you really need is pretty condensed into a sort of a you know, farthest walk might be like 10 minutes. So another area that I don't want any of you to really get hung up on because the differences that you might be seeing, it's not like you have to hop on a bus and then catch another bus. To, this is all walkable. It's all pretty well condensed and you don't really know exactly where you're going to be spending the majority of your time during your first year there. So, you know, you don't know exactly which building has all most of your classes. So that stuff right now is not stuff I, I think you need to worry too much about. I saw the same thing, Craig. I had a student ask if I'm this major then where should I live so I'm closest to my classes? The classes are going to be all in the central area. There's uh, quite a few class buildings. So technically you could be closer to one or two of your classes, but those classes are going to be throughout campus. And you really don't know where you might want to go to study on a daily basis, where your favorite places are going to be. So, you know, it, it's all very walkable and it's, there's not going to be one that's better than the other one to me to, to get to your classes. Shannon, I see that you want to share your experience with how you kind of ended up um, finding your community. 
Sure. Um, so I actually started off in Mountain View. Um, that is where we have our engineering learning community. So basically what that means is you will be living with somewhere between 20 and 30 other students that are all thinking about joining engineering as their major. Um, and you tend to have a lot of your classes all together, a lot of your labs together. So it's really nice to be living with people who, you know, you can just go down to the next door and you can ask your homework question because they're right there. Um, so I really love my time in Mountain View. Um, and then I was applying to be an RA and I got pulled to College in the Woods. So I have to give College in the Woods a little bit of a shout out right now. Um, so honestly, a lot of people always ask, which is the best community and having lived in two, like they're all fantastic for their different reasons. So wherever you end up, you're going to be happy for sure. Thanks so much, Shannon. That's really great. Um, I'm glad also, you know, a lot of the students have shared with us that they've had experience in more than one place. And um, what's nice that you're hearing also is I had a few questions where they said, do upperclassmen live on campus? Who lives on campus? And how that dynamic is made. So um, as you can see, we have, you know, students from freshmen and our upperclassmen all mingling on campus and making the community what it is. Yeah, that's a really good point, Amanda. I, and look, we have students coming in from 100 plus countries, all 50 states. Uh, that is the magic of Binghamton, because residentially speaking, we actually encourage students to embrace that diversity and the power of that. And diversity of even age group, right? If you're a first year student, making a connection with a senior who's about to become a young alum, who's going to maybe work for a company that you're thinking about working for someday, that is what we try to foster there, right? It's, there's the abilities in many of our communities to do that. Uh, so look forward to that aspect of it. Um, and another piece, I, I, there, there tends to be this idea that, you know, one community has more amenities than the other. And actually, there's a lot more similarities between our communities than there actually are differences. And there's certainly things you could read through when you go onto our Residential Life webpage and you see the different communities. You know, it's more about the, the traditions of the communities, which is just themes and activities that they that they always had. But in terms of physical structures and, and things that they offer, they're actually much more similar than they're not. Um, there's, you know, a community kitchen in most of our buildings. You know, while the apartment buildings, apartment communities have them in the apartments, most of the lower campus housing, which a lot of our first year students are going to be a part of, are community kitchens in the building, right? In one per building. So it kind of brings another central point of connection if you want to use that. Shannon, were you about to add something that I, you know, talk too long? But I'll just hang around if there's anything else. Uh, I, I will, Amanda, if you, I'm going to pick up on a couple of questions. Some of the questions were about specific um, invite-only programs. Uh, there's not specialized housing outside of the, the scholars uh, floor in one of our communities, um, but we would let you know if that's something that you need to be aware of. Other than that, uh, the only other option at this stage, what you're thinking about might be a, a learning community, which as you mentioned, coming up on Sunday, we'll have um, some more in-depth views of what we offer. And there's plenty on the web on that. Um, just to start thinking about if you really do want to live in a somewhat of a specialized floor of students with similar interests, by no means is that going to be the only students interested in that subject matter. Uh, it's just another option. Again, we like to have, make sure you have options there. Right. And I think that, um, as you said, you, a lot of the students right now are looking at all the different options that there are and trying to sort their way through it. And so I really do encourage people, like uh, Craig has said, if you're still trying to figure out what you want to do and, and what kind of community, what you want to be in, I would definitely go to that, that Sunday webinar. Um, and, you know, we, we uh, are kind of running short on time here. So I think uh, we have time for one more topic uh, to go over before we wrap up. We're not going to be able to get to all your questions. You all have a lot of great questions. Um, so please do uh, look to join us um, on our chat hours or the student chat hours uh, so that we can address some more of those questions. I do want to just put one out there about the, the transfer questions. We got a lot of that. I mean, yeah. transfers can live anywhere between, you know, a lot of them actually do live on campus and it's many more probably live in the apartments it's just as an option but it's certainly just to, i know there was a lot of transfer questions but yeah the chat hours we're gonna have plenty of time to go through that uh maybe we look forward to that i think that will give you many of you an opportunity to engage more with us i just want to do a quick shout out um i was a transfer student 
Um, I chose to live, as, as I said, in Mountain View my first year with not on transfer floor, but I am now the transfer RA and there is a transfer floor in Cayuga Hall and College in the Woods. Thanks, Shannon. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us again. Uh, as I said before, we do have our chat hours. We've put those out there for you. Thank you again so much for joining us this evening. It has been fantastic to get to hear what you're thinking about and what you're seeing. And um, as you're going through the process, which is a really exciting, but maybe stressful process too, of figuring out where to live, whether it be comfortable in Lincoln. So please keep in touch and we're here to answer your questions on the chat hours and with our other webinars. Take care, bye.